Kia ora. Thank you for coming today to the launch of our issues paper for the review of the Property Relationships Act 1976. This Act directs how a couple are to divide their property at the end of their relationship, on separation or on the death of a partner. It is important social legislation that will affect almost every New Zealander over their lifetime. When first enacted in 1976, this Act challenged and helped redefine the role of women in society. When it was amended in 2001, the Act sought fair treatment for different relationship types by extending its application to de facto relationships and same-sex relationships. The Act has both reflected and shaped societal values in the way people enter, conduct and leave relationships. Yet we know that New Zealand in 2017 looks very different to New Zealand in the past. Alongside our issues paper, we are also publishing a study paper, Relationships and Families in Contemporary New Zealand. He honga tangata, he honga whānau i Aotearoa o Nainei, which confirms that these changes have been dramatic. New Zealand is now more culturally diverse. The proportion of New Zealanders identifying as European has dropped from 88% in 1976 to 74% in 2013, while Māori, Pacific and Asian populations have all more than doubled. Children are now 10 times more likely than older New Zealanders to identify with more than one ethnicity. New Zealand's marriage rate has dropped significantly and de facto relationships are more common. In 2013, one in five couples said that they were in a de facto relationship, compared to less than one in ten in 1986. Nearly half of all the children born last year in New Zealand were born to parents who were not married or in a civil union. While there is little research in New Zealand about repartnering, there are indications that it is becoming more common as are step families, and we do know that a third of all marriages are remarriages. Families' living arrangements change frequently, and more New Zealanders are living in an extended family household. A recent study suggested that only a small number of children live their whole childhood in a household containing only nuclear family members. So the question for us is whether, amongst all this change, the Property Relations Act still reflects the values and expectations of New Zealanders today. Many questions are raised in our issues paper, and today I just want to mention three of the big questions we have asked. Who should the Act apply to? We want to know whether the Act is capturing the right relationships. It applies to marriages, civil unions and de facto relationships. But does the way the Act considers whether a de facto relationship exists recognise the right factors and give them the right weight? For example, we've heard anecdotally that there is an increasing variety in approaches to managing finances. Some people prefer to keep their finances separate even though they are living as a couple. This may be because one or both partners have children from previous relationships and prefer to organise their financial affairs separately. Should such financial choices affect whether the rules of the PRA apply to such relationships? Another question is whether three years is the appropriate period of time before the Act's general rule of equal sharing applies, or should it be longer? At what point should a de facto relationship incur these property consequences? We are also asking what property the Act should cover. Some people say that the Act forces people to divide property that was not acquired through joint effort. For example, when one partner brings a family home into the relationship but the other does not, some people suggest that it's unfair that the full value of the house be divided between the couple if the relationship ends. So should the definition of relationship property be changed to only cover property acquired during the relationship? This would have significant consequences for the size of the property pool available for division, so needs to be considered very carefully. The third question I want to mention relates to the role of children in an act which is primarily about adults. The interests of children are referred to in the Property Relationships Act, but we have found that in practice children's interests are seldom expressly taken into account. Children of relationships are affected when parents or step-parents separate, and New Zealand family law has increasingly adopted a more child-centred approach with a, a range of social legislation.
So a key question we consider is whether the PRA should be reformed to take greater account of children's interests. There have been so many ways that so many changes to the way New Zealanders conduct relationships and the way we form families that it is time to look hard at the Property Relationships Act. Does the law still reflect New Zealanders' expectations? Does it ensure that there is a just division of property at the end of a relationship? We want New Zealanders to give us feedback on the issues we discuss. We hope people will go to our website to answer our questions and tell us their stories. We also hope to see many New Zealanders at one of the public meetings we are holding around the country. Thank you for coming today. We'd be pleased to answer any questions you have.